Bryce here from CodeLife.io, and today we are talking local storage. So I think what we're going to do here is we're going to pull down an Angular application I previously made for a to-do app. So if you go over here, github.com slash my name is Earl, URL, haha, uh, Angular to-do app, um, you'll find there is a project, which in a previous tutorial, I built a to-do application, um, which is pretty slick. But now we want to add local storage so we can persist or make those uh, to-dos stay around, even if we refresh the page or come back to the page later. So we can do that with local storage. So let's go ahead and get started by pulling down that product. So I have a branch called local storage, local storage example, excuse me. So you can just copy the URL, whether it be HTTP or SSH, however you have your setup. Uh, if you don't have SSH set up on GitHub, use HTTPS. Uh, click that link and then you can copy that uh, to download it. So let's go over here into our terminal and we can go git clone, paste that URL. Boom, ls to list directories. Awesome, we have the app. So let's cd into that directory, change directory. Um, perfect, now we have the project. Now we can go yarn install or if you have don't have yarn, you only have npm, you can go npm install either will work we'll install all the required dependencies in my experience yarn is a little faster if you haven't used yarn it's a drop-in replacement for npm works great um perfect so now we should have everything and if we go ng serve don't worry about that warning just saying I have a newer version installed than the previous version because we did this tutorial about I guess a month, two months ago. Perfect. So now if we come over here, we go to localhost 4200. Boom. We see our project. So we can add more to-dos. Hello world. And everything works great. Perfect. But check it out, if we refresh the page, gone. So it goes back to the original state we had set. So if you inspect this here, and we go to, not sources, uh, application, there it is. So you'll see, um, if you go inspect application, then you'll see here, you have a couple of different ways we can store stuff. You probably have heard, heard of cookies and that's how kind of websites track you and see if you've been there before. Um, they'll create various cookies. Um, but in local storage, you can have some various things here. So we have, uh, um, well, you can store some data there and you'll see, oh, I have some stuff already stored here. So when I did this project earlier, I was working on it. Um, so I created a key called to do's and this is what we're going to do. And then I actually put in there, um, a JSON object of to do's ID number two text, whatever. Um, so you can actually store some data in here. So you could have just, you know, regular, my key is whatever, my value is some string, which this is technically a string value. So we just stringify it before we store it in there. So you can use this, um, typically it's most common use cases for storing a authentication token uh, for a website. So every time it makes a request down to the server, server sees that token on the API call and then authenticates the user, or like in the JWT, uh, situation. If you if you're not familiar with JWTs, look them up. Pretty cool, but it's a stateless way to authenticate, so it doesn't have to look up your username and password or your session token every time. But you could store that information here, um, so it's great. So the only thing is, other websites can see that too. So um, there's some trade offs, right, and security wise. So let me go ahead and delete that so we get started. So just be aware that that's where it lives. So close this for now. And let's go ahead and jump into the code here. I'm just gonna stop this, open it up with Adam. Let me restart this here. All right, so we have our project here. And if we go to source app, and then in app, we go to services, and we go to the to do service. Make this a little bigger here. So you probably remember this, right? So what we did was in our constructor, 
we set the to do's to be these three to do's. So every time we refresh our app, it's always going to start with these to do's because we kind of preload it and we say next ID is three. Um, and that makes it pretty simple, right? So to get started. Um, but what if we want to save our to do's and not always like refresh back to the start, right? So we want to start with like nothing and then enter some to do's, refresh the page, have it stay there, close the web page, open it back up. Um, we want to use local storage to store our to do's. And then every time we come to this website, it's going to look for that to do's key and it'll get the value, which will be our to do's. So let's go ahead and jump into this. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this for right now because we don't want to initialize it right and we'll say hmm we'll say let to do's equal this dot get to do's so we're going to call our to do's function and we want it to return but it was actually returning this dot to do's which was what we had before right so now we're not using um setting this to a uh, variable on this. This is a private variable here to this um, block scoped function here. So what we actually wanna do is we wanna return the to-dos that would be in local storage. So what we'd wanna do instead, we'll say let local storage item equal, and we're gonna use JSON so we got to parse the JSON response in there of local storage, which this is just a default uh, JavaScript um, function here where you can just call or object that you can fetch what you need. So you can go get item and the other property is set item if you want to set the value. So we want to get the, the value of to do's. So to do's will be the key that will be stored in local storage. And then we will return local storage item. Um, but if it equals null, we don't want to return null, right? Like we're expecting an array to come back and render out an array. So we'll say if it is null, which we probably just say if we just say, but you can just do this here. Eh, I'll say null, just be explicit so everybody understands what we're doing here. Um, we'll return an array or local storage item dot to do's. Right? So what we want to return, and so this is called the ternary operator. So it's like an if else statement, right? So it's going to evaluate this like if local storage equals null, if that is true, return an array, an empty array. Otherwise, return local storage item, which is the item we parsed out, and dot to do's. Because if you remember, um, it was actually an object that started with uh, the first field in that object was to do's. So that's why we got to do dot to do's. So you could you could structure it differently, but this is just how I'm going to structure it. Um, and then we probably. Um, to make it easy to set our local storage items, let's do this. Let's make a private function because we just need it in here. Set local storage to do's. We'll say to do's is required to be passed in. That's an array of to do's. We'll say return type of this function is void. And we'll say local storage dot set item. So here we were doing get item. We we're fetching based on the key of to do's. Here we are going to set it. So this is kind of our helper function here. So we go set item to do's. And do json.stringify. And we'll do to do's, which is a type of to do's. Oh, excuse me, no. <laughs> we'll stringify and the key and the value is to do's. Perfect. So whatever to do's gets passed in, it'll be set here. We stringify it. Um, and so the key is to do's and the value is the stringified version of the to do's array that's passed in.
So it seems a little more complicated than it is, but this little function is going to help us out. Because now we got to do stuff a little different, right? So when you add a to-do, before we were adding it um, to this dot to do's and just pushing it on the array. But we don't have that anymore, right? We need to save it in local storage. So we're going to rewrite this a little bit here. And let's do, um, so we're going to say let to do's, make it a local variable here, equal this dot get to do's. So we have to fetch the to do's first, right? Because there may be somewhere already in local storage that we haven't found yet. So let to do's equal get to do's. And then I want to say to do's dot push. We'll say to do. So just like we were doing before, we created a new to do of to do type. So we instantiated a new to do object. We're saying the to do's array is going to be fetching the get to do's, which is fetching it from local storage. And now we want to push onto this to do's our to do that we're adding. Then we want to save that to do into local those that to do array into local storage. So we'll say this dot set local storage to do's to do's. So that made it pretty easy, right? Because we have a helper function down here, set local storage to do's. We pass it in our to do's array, and boom. Then we just increment next uh, ID, which is currently set to three. So that's not correct, right? So we got to kind of go up there and rewrite some of that logic here. So let's get rid of that for now. So we have our to do's. And so we want to say if to do's dot length equals zero, we will say this dot next ID equals zero, right? So if we fetch the to do's, we'll get to do's, which is getting it from local storage. And the to do's, there's no to do's in there, right? It's an empty array. Then we want to set next ID to zero because that's our first one. Um, else, if there are to do's that came back, we need to figure out what that max ID is going to be, right? So how can we do that? So we can say max, let max ID, and we'll set that equal to to do's, which is our to do's array we got back from local storage. And we want to get the last to do in the array. So we'll say to do's dot length, oops, length minus one. So that gets us the last to do, but we need the ID now. So we'll say dot ID. So it gives the ID of the last to do in that array. Um, and then let's set next ID to be this dot next ID. And we'll set it to equal to max ID plus one, right? because let's say max ID of the well, biggest ID in that array is seven. Well, we already have a seven in that array, so we need to set it to one more than that. So I think that'll do it. Oh, nope. So now we got to write remove to do. So this isn't going to work, right? Because we're still referencing this dot to do's. So what we want to do I'll leave that there for a second. We'll say let to do's equal this dot get to do's. So before we can remove it to do, we need to know what uh, the to do's currently are, right? So we could have like a this globally scoped one up here, but I don't think that makes sense to have that, right? Because we don't want to keep it tracking two places, right? We want one source of truth. So if we're tracking it locally and we're tracking it outside in local storage, it doesn't make sense. So we're just going to dereference everything to that this dot to do's. So you see, we got some problems here. So what if we just say to do's oops, equals to do's dot filter. Yeah, so that logic can stay. And then once we're done, we just need to update local storage, right? To actually reset the to do's array. So it's kind of a, we're not really pushing it on. We got to keep pulling that value down and then resetting that value. It's going to be the best way to do it. Um, so we'll say this dot set local storage to do's and we'll pass it in our to do's 
array that we now have after we filtered out the one we were supposed to remove. So if I save that, let's go over. Perfect, so we have no to-dos. I'll say test, um, get groceries. Looks like it's working pretty good. I can remove this one, get milk, do my homework. Perfect. Now if we inspect, go over to application, look at that. So we have a key of to-dos and you can see our value. Make this a little bigger here. You can see we have an array of to-dos with an ID and their text. So just like they were before being stored within our application, but now if I refresh the page, boom, they're all still there because it's referencing them from local storage. Um, we can see here, I can actually, since it is a string, we can just edit this. So I could delete this. And now if I refresh the page, what do you think will happen? Boom. So that first uh, to do is removed because it's reading from this uh, value. So then I can remove one more and you see it popped off the stack there. Get milk, boom, adding it back in real time. So that's an awesome example of how you can use uh, local storage to persist values like a authentication token that you use to authenticate request. So if you, when you log in, you would add the token there that you would get back from the server. To, that way the server can identify who's making the request every time. Then when you log out, you would delete that token out. Um, and that way there wouldn't be any risk that somebody else jumped on your computer and started using it. So uh, if you guys got any questions, hopefully that helps uh, people who are trying to figure out local storage and how that works. Uh, should be a pretty short and simple uh, tutorial. I'll put a link to the old code or the previous uh, tutorial with the to-do app in the uh, comments below. And then also um, over here, you can check out that local storage uh, branch if you want um, to go ahead and get started. So let me know if you guys have any questions. Take care and happy coding.